Over to your talk. So, <clears throat> hello. My name is Inrak Choi from Stanford University. And this work was done with wonderful collaborators, uh, Heather Kaberson, Mark Miller, Sean Fermer from Stanford University, and Alex Orwar from Google. Thanks to all of you, and let me start the presentation. Gravity, a wearable haptic interface for simulating weight and grasping in virtual reality. So we are interested in haptic technologies. For the last two decades, haptic technologies were focused on surgical robotics and teleoperations. Researchers focused on high performances in terms of precision position tracking, force rendering, and fast control loop for specific manipulation tasks. The haptic devices used to be desktop mounted for creating forces from outside. Because these devices are grounded mechanically to the outside, oftentimes people call them grounded haptic devices. However, there has been much excitement about commercial VR and how haptics can apply to it. If we look at this video of Oculus, we can see that there are many objects that users may want to interact with naturally. We and many others believe haptics is key enabling, to enabling this kind of rich physical interactions with virtual objects. So for general interaction in commercial VR, wide motion range, mobility, and low cost are perhaps more important properties. And because of that, there are many research projects recently about ungrounded haptics. So we see that the form factor of haptic devices needs to change. We believe ungrounded haptic devices are more suitable for commercial VR haptics because they, are wide range of, they have wide range of motion. However, there's a limitation among ungrounded haptic devices. Ungrounded haptic devices cannot provide external forces because they are not grounded to outside through mechanical linkages. And we think this is a big limitation for VR applications. Let me give you an example. When a person grasps an object, they are grasping forces to the thumb and fingers, but also weight from the mass of the object due to gravity. There have been many haptic devices developed for grasping force feedback for research or commercial purposes. However, these existing haptic gloves provide grasping forces only and do not render object weight. And this is not desirable because first, it is not realistic, and second, users don't know when they lift the object, so it is bad for manipulation. An ideal haptic device for commercial VR would be an ungrounded haptic device with the capability of rendering external kinesthetic forces. And our goal in this paper is that building an ungrounded haptic device for grasping with the sensation of weight. First, we need to think about how we perceive weight. Basically, it is a combination of multiple sensory systems on human body. There are many sensory receptors for weight perception. First, every muscle has muscle spindles inside and they sense force by measuring pressures. Second, Golgi tendon organs are stretched and feel the tension. Finally, there are mechanical receptors on skin and they sense shear forces and pressures. So by sensing various pressures and tensions in different places on the body at the same time, we can perceive weight. And our goal is, is simulating weight feedback by just using the sensation from mechanical receptors on fingertip skin. Recently, there is an interesting research topic about this called uh, asymmetric vibration. Researchers found that human senses virtual kinesthetic force through asymmetric vibration. Amamiya et al. investigated this virtual force effect first in 2008 using their slider crank linkage device. More recently, Rakimoto found the same effect using a voice call actuator, which is much smaller and lighter than Amamiya's device. Then Coverson et al. have modeled the asymmetric vibration from a voice call actuator. So far, there are, many, there are not many applications using this illusion, and we thought it can be a good trier to use this illusion for a haptic device. First, let's look at grasping an everyday object to see the haptic feedback we need to generate. Uh, we can see there's a contact, grasping, gravity, force, and inertia. And this is our device, gravity. Uh, 
So there are four types of haptic feedback that gravity can render. It renders essential haptic feedback during green. So first, when users make the contact to a virtual object, the same voice coil actuators used by Coverson at R to generate asymmetric, asymmetric skin stretch are used here to generate transient vibration. Once the users grab the virtual object, the brake locks the finger motion to create grasping force. When the users lift the object, the voice coil actuators make asymmetric vibration to simulate weight sensation. If the users shake the virtual object, the magnitude of asymmetric vibration changes based on the acceleration of the hand. And now let's look at how the device works. There are three main bodies on the device. There is a sliding part, base, and a swinging part. The index finger and middle finger are mounted on the sliding part, and the thumb is mounted on the base. There are two types of actuators. There is a unidirectional brake next to the index finger, and there are two voice coil actuators on the swinging part. And the distance between the index finger and thumb is measured with an encoder, and there are ret retroreflective markers for global position tracking. So the device weight is about 65 grams, and the pinching distance is between 30 and 100 millimeter. The voice coil actuators are connected through bearings, so they rotate passively to align their directions normal to the ground. Because of this, we can render the gravity force even while rotating the device. However, the device doesn't render the gravity force to the normal direction on the finger pads because the asymmetric vibration illusion works effectively only with the lateral skin stretch. To generate grasping force feedback, we brought the brake mechanism from Wolverine. It is a unidirectional brake mechanism create very rigid stiffness. We selected this brake mechanism because it is very simple to control and lightweight, but also create large grasping forces. Two voice coil actuators give various haptic feedbacks, such as touching, gravity, and inertia. Voice coil actuators are basically speakers, and we can generate vibration with various frequencies and amplitude independently using the actuators. The input current signals show how to create virtual forces for weight simulation. We see that the current goes negative with a step function and goes positive linearly. This pattern makes the voice coil actuators move downward quickly and moves up slowly then the asymmetric vibration generate the downward virtual force. The virtual force perception was dependent on how we grab the device. The finger pads should be placed on the mount part correctly for skin stretch. So we attach a sandpaper on the finger mount surfaces for better friction. We connected gravity to a VR system. We used Oculus Rift, Rift for display and OptiTrack for tracking and we use Chai 3D haptic engine for graphic and haptic rendering. We render some simple 3D shapes with different sizes and different weight. So after implementing the device, we had two main questions. First, we wanted to measure the, uh, how strong the perceived virtual force is. So, and we had to know this to render haptic feedback using the device. And we also wanted to know if it is controllable. And second, we wanted to know if the device really worked for weight simulation in VR. To answer the first question, we measured the asymmetric vibration first. We measured accelerations using an accelerometer mounted to the device to see the asymmetry of vibrations. The top figures shows the input signal, and the bottom uh, figures show the acceleration output with different current amplitude. The five figures in the top low row, uh, we see that the magnitude of negative acceleration keeps increasing while, while the positive acceleration looks the same. From the five figures below, we see that the negative acceleration doesn't change anymore, and the magnitude of positive acceleration keeps increasing. 
To see the effect of the current magnitude, we made another plot with the same data. The x-axis is the magnitude of the current, and the y-axis is the acceleration asymmetry, which is the difference between the absolute values of the maximum and minimum acceleration. And we see that the asymmetry only increases within the range between 0.2 and 0.4. So we decided to use the three values in this range for virtual force rendering. 12 people participated for the virtual force measurement. We used staircase method to calculate the perceived virtual forces. Users compared the weight from the virtual force with a real mass. For better explanation, we give, uh, if we give downward asymmetric signal to the voice coil actuators, users will receive vibration, but also the downward virtual force. To measure the downward virtual force, the symmetric signal on the right side gives the reference haptic feedback, which is just vibration, but same frequency and magnitude with the left signal. The participant uh, will say the left one is heavier. Then we add a real mass to the right signal, and users keep compare the weight until they cannot tell the difference. We measure three types of virtual forces. We measure downward forces, upward forces, and the force width difference between upward and downward. We measured with three different magnitudes of current, uh, so there were total nine conditions. And this is a result. We found that the device can generate downward force up to 15 grams and upward force up to 8 grams. The device also can generate various amount of virtual forces by controlling the magnitude of current. However, the results have huge variance depending on users. After the first task, we wanted to get qualitative feedback about how the device works when grasping object in VR. To do this, we gave users a simple weight sorting task. We rendered three blocks with uh, different weights. Users picked up and felt each block's weight, and they placed the blocks on top of the shelf in order of weight. For weight rendering of three blocks, we used the same signals in the first task. From the first task, we, the three perceived downward forces were about 6 grams, 12 grams, and 15 grams. There were five participants about this, and they did six trials for each. After the weight sorting task, they used the device for three minutes for qualitative feedback. This confusion matrix shows the result. Users responded correctly with 60% of chance. There, were, there was some confusion. Especially, users were confused between medium and heavy weight. This gave the similar trend compared to the task one result. The medium and heavy weight were too close, so that it was almost the border of the just noticeable difference. The following qualitative feedback tell how users thought. First, uh, vibration was apparently interferes some users' VR experience. Some users also felt that it was really difficult to differentiate the three weights. It makes sense because the amount of virtual forces were pretty small, and there were also vibrations interfering the perception. Users, uh, users liked the fact that gravity is not grounded to outside, and they had large uh, range of motion. Finally, they were surprised about the haptic illusion in general. So there are some limitations of the device. First, the vibration bothers some users. However, users need to feel the vibration first to feel the virtual force. Second, the virtual force strengths are hardware dependent and currently limited to negative 15 to 8 grams. Also, the haptic illusion was varied a lot depending on how users grab the device. And finally, this mechanism works with asymmetric skin displacement, so it worked well for the later, later directions of the finger pad. There are two topics we are interested in the future. First, we still don't know the exact mechanism, how we sense the virtual force. But at least we know that the, the amount of virtual forces is, is quite small. So we want to try to find how we can maximize the virtual force by changing actuators 
all the current signal patterns. Also, we would like to do more testing with users to see the trade-off between comfort and the virtual force amount. In this talk, we introduce gravity, and gravity renders four types of haptic feedback, such as contact, grasping, weight, and inertia. Gravity renders control over virtual forces. Users fear various weight from the device, but vibration currently limits the, some real reason. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'll take questions. I'm, I'm, I'm Sakhe Jan from Kyung University. My concern is that, uh, is it really realistic? Because I think uh, it can generate directional force, but uh, I'm not really sure that it really generate the feeling of, um, feeling of, uh, of, of gravity. So it's a little bit different from actually generating directional force, I guess. So realism, is it, is it really realistic? As if it's you, someone really feeling as if they, they are grabbing something. So your question is about the realism about the force for gravity yes, render? Yes, I, I, I think there is a difference between just uh, showing directional force and giving realistic feeling of grabbing. So mostly people said it was almost like a pulling down or pulling up or the force, like in continuously. And then we just use that effect for the uh, gravity rendering. But people said even we, so from the first task, we measured the vibration, the virtual force with the real mass. But some people said uh, the virtual force is more like, more than real mass. Like uh, even we like, uh, put some weight, they can still feel the forces upward, for example. So there was no specific mechanism I understood from there, but we use that effects for gravity rendering. And then people, obviously people like felt some like uh, amount of weight, like uh, 15 grams. So, okay. Hello, uh, Juan Zarate from EPFL Switzerland. Thank you for your talk. I um, wonder about the frequency you use for, for the vibration and if there is any effect increasing or decreasing that frequency. Mm -hmm. so, so we feel this, vibration with the range of like a zero to like a hundred hertz. And, but this, for this skin stretch, the asymmetric skin stretch, I think 50 hertz was kind of the maximum. We can tell the direction. And some people said 30 hertz was good enough, but mostly about 40 hertz was the maximum like, like a force like a generated. Thanks, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.